Hello, this is Wendy from Wendy Thoughts of Art. We're gonna be multiplying fractions today. Isn't that exciting? Yay! Two over five times five over 10. We're gonna find the answer, then we're gonna simplify it. And I did that by saying equals to two over five times five over 10, we're doing cross canceling. That's the first method that I'm going to explain to you. The first method is cross canceling. And cross canceling, we're gonna say how many times two can go into 10 is five times, and how many times two can go into self is one time. So this was canceled, it got five. This was canceled and it got to one. And we also gonna cross cancel for these two. How many times five can go into five one times and how many times five can go into self down here is one time. So that's a first method of cross canceling. Now we're gonna get to the second one. And the second method is multiplying straight across. And that's basically, we're doing basically by timesing these two and we're gonna simplify that. We're going to simplify that by finding the GCF of 10 and 50. And the GCF is basically, I try to find out, you know, the multiple of 10 and the multiple of 50. I did that by saying 10 times one is 10, two times five is 10, five times two is 10. I boxed it and I it, that's how I end up with finding 10. And over here, I said, what multiples will equal to 50 to make sure if these are the two numbers that I'm gonna go with to be the GCF. I said five times 10 is 50, 10 times five is 50, and I boxed it, it ended up being 50. So I also did by saying 10 divided by 10 is equal to one, 10 divided by 50 is equal to five. So that is simplifying it and by showing my work to make it a little bit easier. I wanna make sure that you know the answer is one over five, and that was the answer that's been simplified. And now we're gonna to get to the second problem. The second problem, it cannot get easier as this. Two over three, times four over five, it doesn't have to be simplified. I wanted to give you this problem so you can see the difference. These are already reduced and you just basically multiply it straight across. So two times four is eight, three times five is 15. That is the final answer. It cannot get easier than this one. So now we're gonna get into the third problem. We're going to multiply a whole number with a fraction times a whole number with a fraction, and we're gonna simplify it by getting the answer. Okay, so now we're going to say five times one, which is the whole number, is five. Five plus three, we're gonna add the top because with a fraction and a whole number, you're gonna times that whole number with the bottom, which is the denominator, is five and you're gonna add three, which is going to be eight over five. And we also going to say five times one is five, plus two is seven over five. And I will write it down for you as well too. Okay, so since we did five times one is five plus three is eight, which is eight over five times one over five is five plus two is seven so it's seven over five so that's how you convert a whole number into the fraction and get one answer and we did the same for this side since we got the whole number with the fraction with one answer for both of them so we multiplied across we said eight times seven is 56 Five times five is 25. So it's 56 over 25. And I have a question for you. Are we done? No, we're not done yet. We're going to simplify this. 56 over 25, we're going to simplify this answer. 
and we're going to simplify 56 into 25 by putting it in a division form. It's still simplifying it. It's very similar to the first one. This is a much larger problem, so I had to do it this way. So 25 divided into 56, which is two times, because 25 times one is 25. 25 times two is 50. We put two on the top. We subtract it, and we subtract the 56 from 50. We got six, which is the remainder. So it's two with the remainder of six. I have a question for you. Are we done yet? No, we're not done yet, actually. We're not done simplifying it. We're not done yet because we have two remainder six. What are we going to be doing after that? Okay, so we're going to be converted into fraction form back again because we need to finish with the answer. So we basically going to take two, we're going to take six, which is the remainder, and we're going to use 25 as well. Okay, so two end up being the whole number. The remainder end up being six over 25. So the final answer is two and six over 25, which is converted back into a fraction form. We're going to be doing the last question of the day. 2 and 1 over 2 times 1 and 1 over 3rd equals to what? We're going to do the conversion of 2 and 1 over 2. And we're going to be doing that by saying 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And we're going to bring down the 2, which is it stays the same. So it's going to be 5 over 2. And over here, we're going to say 1, which is the whole number, times 3, which is 3, plus 1 is 4. It's going to be 4 over 3. And we bring down the 3, which stays the same. Then we're going to multiply across. And what will we get? Which equals to 20 over 6. Since 20 over 6 is still in proper fraction, we're going to do that by still simplifying it because this is not the final answer. Since 20 over 6 is still in proper fraction, we're going to simplify it by finding the GCF. Mm. So the GCF of 20 and 6 is 2. Now that we got our answer by dividing 20 by 2 and 6 by 2, which was the GCF, it simplifies to 10 over 3. Will that be the final answer? If yes was your answer, then you're totally wrong. Since 10 over 3, it still isn't the answer, we're going to be simplifying it even more by converting it into a mixed fraction. We'll give you the final answer. Since 10 over 3 is not quite the answer, we're going to be converting it into a mixed number. It's being converted by basically dividing 3 into 10, which is 3 times 3 is 9. Put the 9 under here. Got the 1 and the 3, which is the divisor, becomes a whole number here. The remainder is being placed on top. And the quotient is going to be on the bottom. So the full complete answer will be 3 and one over third.